What's up guys, Dinner 122 and it's teaching day! I know I, I said I was gonna do XC Monsters next, but if, if anything is is holding true with this series is that I'm I'm doing whatever video I wanna do and I'll get to that one sometime in the future. Sitting at work, I had an epiphany. The thing I wanted to talk about today is side decking. There is probably not one thing in this game that separates competitive and casual play more than the side deck. In this video, I'm gonna talk about what a side deck is, when you use it, how you should use it, and if there's time, I'll give you some suggestions of what to put in the damn thing. So let's get started. What's a side deck? Well, before we get to that, we need to explain a tournament. For those of you who don't know, tournaments tend to be broken up into rounds. If you're going to a more competitive tournament, let's say a locals or even a regionals or YCS, you will play a round. Rounds tend to be matches. And what's a match? Well, a match is best two out of three games against a single opponent. You meet your opponent, you play game one, you play game two, and then if you each won one, you play game three until the first person wins two games. Unless you win game one and two yourself, then your opponent doesn't even get to go with game three because you've already got the two. Congratulations, you won the round, or they won the round. Someone won the round. You got the match point. Now that we know what a round is, we can actually get to the question of what's your side deck? The side deck is any 15 cards you want to bring along with you that go in tandem with your 40 card or more main deck and your 15 card extra deck. These can be any cards you want, but you do need to remember that the cards in your side deck also count to the absolute total card count in the whole deck itself, so if you have three copies of a card in your main deck, you can't have any copies in your side deck. Also, the forbidden limited list counts for this too, so if you had a regeki in your side deck and a regeki in your main deck, that would be illegal. And even if it wasn't true, even if you could have as many copies in your side deck as you want, and you just had to like make sure that your main deck was was banless legal, I don't know why you would ever take a Regeki out of your side deck and swap it with the one in your main deck. I, who, I mean, why would you ever swap a card for a copy of itself? I mean, why would you do that? What is a side deck for and when do you use it? Now, I know I said there could be any 15 cards you want, however, there is a stipulation to that. Normally, a good side deck consists of cards that are particularly good during the current format. Format being the time loosely defined between two ban lists. Unlike your extra deck, which you have pretty much access to during the entire duel as long as you have the, the specific materials on board or in your hand in order to get to it, your side deck, however, comes into play between your games in any given match. Let's say you won game one, you're going into game two, here is the time in which you can actually swap cards from your main deck and your side deck and vice versa. Important note, your main deck and side deck need to go into a round and out of a round and between games with the same amount of cards. So if you have 40 cards in your deck to start with and 15 in your extra deck, when game two starts, you need to have 40 and 15 respectively. You can't like put two cards into your main deck and then just play with a 42 card this game. No, you, you can't do that. You get, the levels have to be the same. Why is this important? As I said before, the fine line between casual and competitive play is made at the side deck and it's probably the difference between going to a tournament and going 2-2 two and two and 4-0. No. Your side deck isn't just going to be any 15 cards you want. I mean, it can be, but if you're actually going to build it properly, it's going to be 15 cards that are good against different decks. And the way you properly side deck is you put cards in that side deck that are good against specific decks that maybe your deck isn't good against or you just want to bolster uh, power against a certain deck. And those decks should be decks that are currently seeing play in the current meta. This is important because during your match you may find that your deck isn't particularly good against your opponent's deck or maybe you just have a good side deck card in your side deck that will really debilitate making your game 2 and 3 much easier than game 1 was. This affords players the opportunity to run cards like Mask of Restrict in the side deck, so that when they run into a deck like Monarchs or Draco, they have a really good card against it, but they don't need to waste space in their main deck, so that if they go into game one and it's not against True Dracos or Monarchs, it's a dead card in your deck. So not only can you use your side deck to put cards in your deck that are good against your opponent for games two and three, you can take out cards that are completely useless. Tailoring your deck to making your games two and three much easier. What to side deck? What to side deck isn't always so cut and dry. Let's say your opponent's playing a deck like I don't know, uh, Burning Abyss. So you decide to put in a card called Macro Cosmos in order to take out the Burning Abyss deck. Playing Macro Cosmos might seem a good idea on paper because it's very good against Burning Abyss, however, certain factors can come into play that'll ruin that strategy for you. Number one, is siding this card into your deck going to hurt you as much as it hurts the opponent? Normally, good side deck cards don't hurt you at all and don't inhibit you from playing, so playing Macro Cosmos in something like Light Swarms would be really foolish because sure, you're gonna close down the Burning Abyss player, but you're also gonna mill and banish all the cards in your deck, so maybe not the best decision. 
The other thing you need to take into consideration is are you going first or second game two and three? Technically, you are not supposed to know whether you are going first or second games two and three until after siding is done, although you can kind of have a good idea depending on how game one went. If you know something about your opponent's stack and if whether if you won or lost, you can decide what happens next. If you lost last game, that means you can decide who goes first in the next game, so that means automatically you know. And if you know what your opponent's deck is playing and how it plays, you may know whether or not they want to go first or they will offer for you to go first going into game two. This is important because if you are signing a bunch of trap cards, going second isn't going to be very ideal. A lot of times the trap cards you would side into a deck in order to play against your opponent are going to be floodgate type things which do you no good if your opponent went first and had an entire turn to set up. So then it's your turn, turn two, you play all these floodgates and they just end phase MST them or something before you even get a chance to activate them. Signing spells and hand traps are good for going second if you're going into game two and three, knowing you're going second. Obviously, a myriad of text choices kind of also determine this, whether or not there is a good hand trap to go second, or if there is a good trap to go first, so you gotta play that by ear as well. But knowing what your opponent is, and knowing what the current meta is, will let you make good decisions on what to put in your side deck. Suggestions for side decking. Now, this will be immediately out of date as soon as I post it, because the current meta is always in flux. However, I can give you some ideas on at least what to look for in certain cards for tech choices to put in your side deck, so that going forward, this video is a little more timeless. As I said before, for decks like Burning Abyss, things like Macrocosmos make a lot of sense because they want to be in the graveyard, and if they're not in the graveyard and they're out of play, obviously their deck doesn't work quite right. If there's a lot of light decks or dark decks running around, your Light and Darkness Mirror are another great option for that. If there's a Tribute Summony deck or a deck that tributes at all, your Zombie World or your Mask of Restrict can be really solid choices. A deck that search a lot, hey, Ash Blossom or Mistake, yeah. If your opponent has a key spell card that they really, really need to activate, and they might activate multiple copies, let's say like a field spell, try something like, I don't know, Curse Seal the Forbidden Spell on that diagram and or their barrage and be like, ha 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 ha. But as I always said, these choices are going to constantly be changing, so always keep on the lookout for interesting tech cards going forward in new formats. Final notes. I know this might seem like a lot of heady crap for players who are more casual, but if you are looking to become more competitive, this is absolutely necessary to learn. Because a lot of times you can get that game one, but it's the game two and three that you're going to have problems with, because if your opponent's playing a side deck, they might have a great out to your deck, and if you're not playing a side deck, you're going to have to go in with a vanilla deck again, and hey, unless you have a really solid natural matchup against everything you're playing against that day, you're going to find that games two and three are much harder. And this does not apply necessarily to whether you're playing a meta deck or a rogue deck or somewhere in between. If you're playing a tier 1 meta deck because you want to put yourself on the same footing as the majority of the other players at the tournament so that you have the same base power level, your side deck is going to determine whether or not you win those games 2 and 3 because of the spicy tech that you have in there in order to counteract what is essentially a mirror match all the time. And if you're playing a rogue deck, whether it's just a deck that you like because it's fun to play or whether it's a good meta call, for instance like that chamber kid at the, the Dragon Duels because that was such a neutered format, a uh, rogue deck like Chainburn could thrive because there wasn't a lot of natural outs to it because no one knew what to play in that thing. Which is actually just as equally important because your deck is now starting behind the starting line because it's not inherently as powerful as the current meta deck, even if it does have a natural like matchup, like Harpies versus Pendulums, all the, all the spell popping that that deck just kind of does even though it would be arguably slower than a Pendulum deck. A proper side in a Rogue deck means that you can keep up with the meta, keep competitive, and you can put those little style and those little tricks that your deck does really well to good use. I hope this wasn't rambly and incoherent. I'm going to try to edit my best in order to make it not so much. However, I'm exhausted from all the overtime I'm working, so I apologize in case if I'm... If I'm bad, 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 bad. So anyway, guys, let me know in the comments below what you guys think of the video and maybe your suggestions for the next learning Yu-Gi-Oh! because these are a very important thing. Uh, losing my train of thought like a boss. These are very important for the younger players trying to get back into the game because I know for a fact that with the Link summoning out and everything, the game is getting more and more complex and it's cost of entry and it's just, you know, learning curve is getting steeper and steeper and steeper. So any tips from us veteran players uh, I know are greatly appreciated. I wish I had something like this when I got back into the game. Ooh, boy. So, anyway, guys, let me know in the comments below what you guys think. And remember, guys, if you don't troll the meta, who will? I'll see you guys next time. Oh, hey, losers. What are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. Want to watch something else? Hurry up and choose one of these. Ugh.
When are you gonna make a choice? This year would be nice.